Hello everyone, welcome back to another English lesson. Today we're going to go over 10 new and crucial words that you need to know if you want to take IELTS. So IELTS is the International English Language Testing System and that is an English language proficiency test. So if you want to test your English skills, IELTS is a good one to try. So we're going to go over 10 new and crucial words that you need to know um, in order to take this test. And if you don't know what crucial means, that's okay. We're going to learn about it today. Also available only to my members on my website. Um, you can get a free PDF and you can take a quiz in order to make sure you understand these words. So if you're interested in getting free PDFs, um, members only lessons and videos, check out my website, breezeenglishstudio.com. I'll leave the link in the description and in the comments. So if you're interested in getting that PDF and taking that quiz, go and check it out. If you become a member, you get access to everything on my website. I'm always updating it. Um, there's PDFs, quizzes, courses, members only videos, everything you can think of. So go check it out. We'd be happy to have you as a member. Okay, let's jump into the lesson. Master IELTS vocabulary. Learn 10 new and crucial words. What does crucial mean? Let's find out. Okay. The first word we're going to look at is the word analyze. Analyze is a verb to analyze something. It means to examine something in detail, typically to understand its components. Components means like parts, uh, structure or meaning. So you look at something, you look at something very closely, and you're trying to understand the meaning or the different parts of it to analyze something, okay? Let's take a look at the example sentences. The scientist decided to analyze the data to identify any patterns. So the scientist decided to look very closely and try to understand the data because they want to find patterns. They're looking for patterns. Okay. In the literature class, we often analyze poems to uncover their hidden meanings. So literature class, you're going to be reading lots of poems, uh, lots of books, things like Shakespeare, and you want to analyze them, analyze, look very closely and try to understand it. So analyze poems to uncover their hidden meanings. Okay, so far so good. Great. Let's go to the next word. Evaluate. Evaluate is also a verb to evaluate. Let's look at the meaning. To assess or judge the quality, significance, or value of something. So when you evaluate something, you're judging it or assessing the quality usually. Okay, quality, value, significance. Let's take a look at the sentences. The teacher asked the students to evaluate each other's presentations. So that means the teacher asked the students to um, kind of rate, judge other students' presentations. Did they do a good job? Did they have enough information? So they want to evaluate the presentation. Before making a decision, it's important to carefully evaluate all the options. So you want to carefully check all of your options. What are the best options? What are the worst options? We can evaluate them to see the quality or value. We can also use the word evaluation. Evaluation is a noun, the noun form. 
Um, and sometimes if you're working for a company, maybe every year they will have an evaluation. They're going to judge how well you work. Are you an asset for the company or are you just causing problems? They're going to evaluate your work. Next, categorize. It is a verb. Meaning to place something into a particular group or category based on its characteristics or features. So um, I remember as a young student in America, our science teacher often had us categorize things. So for example, categorizing animals. Um, that means putting the animal into their um, specific group based on um, if they're a mammal or if they lay eggs, things like that. You put everything in their correct group. You categorize them. Okay, example sentences. The librarian helped categorize the books into different genres. So all of the nonfiction books go here, all of the fiction books go here, and so on and so on. Okay, you can easily categorize these animals as mammals because they all give birth to live young. So this is kind of what I was talking about with science class. Um, okay, these these animals will categorize them as mammals. We'll put them in the mammal group because they give birth to live young. Um, they don't lay eggs. They give birth to um, already alive babies, <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay, next one. Synthesize. Synthesize. So, um, I know in American English, we use a Z in synthesize. Um, I think in British English, they sometimes use an S. So if you see it spelled differently, it's not wrong. It's just British English. Okay. Synthesize the meaning to combine or blend different elements or information to create a new whole or understanding. So basically, if you synthesize some things, you're just combining them. You're taking two different things and combining them together. Okay. Look at the example sentences. The chemist. I know the pronunciation is a little bit hard, so we don't say chemist. We say k -k chemist, like a K. The chemist needed to synthesize several compounds to develop the new drug. So compounds of chemicals. So the chemist, someone who does chemistry, um, needed to combine maybe two or three different compounds to create a new drug, new medicine. Okay, the second one. In her research paper, she was able to synthesize various theories to propose a new approach. So in her research paper, she took uh, theories from different places, combined them to make a new approach. So we combine these things to make something new. We synthesize, okay? Next one. Implication. This is a noun. Implication. So it means a conclusion that can be drawn from something, often indirectly or without it being explicitly stated. Okay, so when there is an implication, it means that even though we don't say it outright, we don't say it directly, we can conclude something from that. Let's take a look at the sentences and talk about it a little bit more. The implication of his statement was that we needed to work harder. So somebody said something. He didn't say, we need to work harder. He didn't say that. But what he said made people think 
we need to work harder. So that's kind of the meaning that they took from his statement. Okay, the implication of his statement, the meaning that we got from his statement is that we need to work harder. The next one, there are many implications of climate change including rising sea levels and extreme weather events. So when we talk about climate change, there are many bad things that can arise from climate change. So that is the implication of climate change. So we can understand all of the bad things that could happen because of climate change. In this sentence, they give two, two examples rising sea levels, extreme weather events. So other than those things, we, there are implications that other bad things will happen. That is the conclusion we can draw from climate change. Okay, next one, diverse. Diverse is an adjective, meaning comprising of a variety of different elements types, or qualities. Let's look at the first example sentence. Our school has a diverse student body with students from over 20 different countries. Diverse means there is a variety of different things. Okay, so a variety of people from different countries. We can say that school is diverse. Okay, the next sentence. The conference featured a diverse range of speakers, each with unique perspectives. So here, diverse range. We often hear these words together, a diverse range. A diverse range is similar to a wide variety. So it means that there's all different kinds of speakers. So they each have their unique perspectives. So a diverse range, a wide variety. We often hear diverse range, um, those two words together. Next one, ambiguous, adjective. I was just having a private lesson with a student. Um, I think she's about 10 years old and I was teaching her this word. So if my 10 year old student knows this word, you should know this word. Okay, you can do it. Ambiguous. It means having more than one possible meaning or interpretation, often due to lack of clarity. Simply, ambiguous means unclear. Something is not clear. Take a look at the sentences. Her response was so ambiguous that I couldn't determine what she really meant. So her response was so unclear that I don't really know what she was trying to say. Second one, the instructions for the assignment were ambiguous, causing confusion among the students. The instructions for the assignment were ambiguous. It means it was not clear. The students had no idea what they were supposed to do. Okay? I like this word because it's it's very simple. It just means unclear. You could say um, the meaning of the poem was ambiguous or the ending of the story was ambiguous. Really easy to use and if you use it, you're gonna sound like you really know English. Okay, next one, convey. This is a verb, um, it means to communicate or express something, typically a message, feeling, or information. So we can uh, convey a feeling, we can convey information, we can convey a message. So you're telling someone something, right? Telling or showing. Okay, let's look at the sentences. The artist used colors and shapes to convey a sense of tranquility in the painting. The artist 
did not use their words, right? They used colors and shapes to convey a sense of tranquility. Tranquility is kind of like peacefulness, calmness. The use of colors and shapes, we can get their message. They're trying to tell us a feeling. It's peaceful, it's calm. So convey, you don't need to use words. You can use other things to show something or um, tell a feeling, okay? The next one, it's important to convey your thoughts clearly in a job interview. So basically here, um, it means to tell, to say. So we could uh, replace the word convey with say. It's important to say your thoughts clearly, tell your thoughts clearly, okay? So convey, you're trying to give your message, your information, your feeling to someone else, okay? Convey, convey your thoughts, convey your feeling, convey a sense of tranquility, all right? Crucial. Adjective. This one um, was in the title of uh, this lesson. Crucial. Crucial is a crucial word for you to know. Uh, it means extremely important or necessary for the success, completion, or understanding of something. So basically, crucial means it's very, very important. Another word we could use is vital. If something's vital something's crucial, it means it is necessary. You need it. So the pronunciation, really quick, the pronunciation is crucial. 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 Um, sometimes I know some students have a hard time pronouncing it uh, because it, it doesn't look how it's pronounced, but crucial. Sounds like an SH crucial. Okay. Let's look at the example sentences. Proper planning is crucial for the success of any project. So proper planning is important. It is vital. It is crucial for the success of any project. Very true. The second one, the witnesses testimony played a crucial role in solving the case. So a witness is someone who saw something happen. So if a crime occurred, a witness is the person who was there, who saw what was happening. We sometimes call them an eyewitness. Okay, if they saw with their own eyes what happened, they're an eyewitness. Okay, the witness's testimony uh, testimony is, in this case, if a crime occurred, um, the witness's testimony would be um, them telling what happened. So they're telling their truth, what they think happened, what they saw or what they heard. That is their testimony. The witness's testimony played a crucial role in solving the case. So the person that saw what was happening and told what was happening, um, that was very important to help solve the case. Okay, very good. Good job, you guys. Paradox. A paradox is a noun. Paradox might be um, one of the more trickier words to use um, because you need to use paradox in a specific situation. When you're talking about a specific situation, a specific kind of situation, you can use the word paradox. Um, it doesn't come up that often in daily conversations. So uh, for me, I would say that paradox is probably one of the more difficult words in today's word list. Okay, but if you want to take IELTS, uh, paradox, is a crucial word for you to know, okay? So what is paradox? Well, it is a noun. It is a statement or situation that seems contradictory 
or absurd, but may have a hidden truth or resolution. Usually we can use paradox when things are contradictory. So if we look at the example sentences, the meaning might become a little bit more understandable. Let's look at the first sentence. The idea that less is more is a paradox in the world of fashion where extravagance often prevails. This sentence might be a little tricky. Let's break it down. The idea that less is more. So less is more is an expression in English that we use um, when we mean um, less of something can sometimes enhance something or be greater than having more of something. For example, we often hear this with makeup. So um, sometimes young girls uh, like to put on a lot of makeup. They think putting on a lot of makeup will make them look more beautiful. Um, but some people think that putting on less makeup, um, less obvious makeup, enhances your features more. So when it comes to makeup, Less is more. This is an expression we sometimes hear. Less makeup will make you more attractive. Um, less makeup will enhance your features more. Having more makeup does not always mean more beautiful, right? Okay, so that is the meaning of less is more. So in this sentence, the idea that less is more is a paradox in the world of fashion. So I just mentioned makeup. So sometimes maybe in the fashion world, they're saying less is more. So maybe less clothes or less gaudy jewelry is more attractive. But it's kind of a paradox because extravagance, maybe very expensive things or um, sometimes a lot of gaudy things is often prevailing in the fashion world. Okay, we often see those things a lot. Um, maybe big hair, lots of makeup, um, lots of jewelry, uh, crazy fashion. It's extravagant. Um, so that is a paradox. It's contradictory. We're saying less is more, but then they're very extravagant. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, let's look at the second sentence. This also will help you understand the word paradox. It's a paradox that the more you try to control things, the less control you often have. It seems contradictory, but there is some kind of truth there, right? So it's a paradox. So the more you try to control things, um, if you try to control the people around you, if you try to control your business, um, sometimes you lose control. Um, so then you're getting less and less control of things. So that is a paradox. You're trying to control it more, but you're losing control. So they're contradictory, okay? All right, that was our last word. What did you think of these 10 crucial words that you need to know for eyelids? Were they easy? Were they difficult? Did you know some of these words already or were some of them new for you? If you would like, you can write some example sentences in the comments. I'll check them. I'll try to comment to everyone um, as much as I can. And if you would like to take the quiz and get the PDF for this lesson, um, I'll leave the link for that too. If you wanna become a member, you can get access to it. I'm always updating the features and the courses for members, so please come check it out. We'd love to have you as a member. Okay, that's it for today's lesson. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in our next lesson. Bye guys.